everybody, my name is Rebecca and in this video I will be talking about my current creative process, challenges within my process, how I can approach those challenges for future projects and how my chosen approach will enhance the outcomes of my projects. Now my current process, I'm a hobbyist illustrator who dreams to be a self-sufficient artist and be able to work within some of the top studios such as DreamWorks and Blue Sky. I currently create designs of mythical creatures using various mediums, both traditional and digital. I enjoy experimenting with all kinds of materials. I have worked with chalk, chalk paint, chalk paint markers, acrylic pouring, acrylic paint, watercolour paint, pencils, markers, digital programs and more. My process starts by me getting straight into sketching my designs in either my sketchbooks or directly into a digital program. I have two books always close by and handy, an A4 book for smaller definite digital drawings and my A3 book where I just play around and experiment with mediums usually before I decide whether to make it a di di digital illustration. However, I sometimes work in colours in my A4 book especially when I'm excited with a design. Once I have the sketch or traditional piece, I will take a photo of it and transfer it to one of my digital programs. This can be my Cintiq tablet using the program Fire Up Echo or my Samsung Galaxy tablet using the program Artflow. I will then go over the sketch with another iteration to finalize shapes before going into the final line art stage. During this stage, I will sharpen lines and just make sure everything is looking good. Once I have completed the line art stage, I add flat colors then basic shading and lighting, as well as the extra effects. Then finally, all the fancy lighting and fancy effects for the final piece. Now, once I've completed my drawing, before I post it online, I save it to a folder with the gear so I can refer back to all my old work by date and possibly make like videos and stuff to date back to show my process. Then to show the world what I can do, as well as market myself to potential clients, I run a Facebook page, YouTube channel, and an Instagram account. My Facebook page is, a main, is my main form of social media as a kind of journal where I post anything I'm up to within my creative world. Running in the background, I post my work to Redbubble and TeePublic. These websites sell my drawings on merchandise such as shirts, cups, that sort of thing, and I get a small commission when something is sold. For larger things such as applications to uni or even jobs or studios, I have a portfolio with my best work. This is so that either if someone asks or I'm applying for something, I can directly link them to my best work. Now areas in my practice which present themselves as most challenging for me. I have a big challenge with marketing, pre-production, post-production and definitely procrastination. My marketing. Ever since the beginning of my goal towards making my hobby into my dream job, I have struggled to maintain a strong market and audience. I always sit around the same number number of people every year with maybe, you know, plus 10 or so and little to no sales or commissions. This year has been a little better as I started giveaways and such, but each of my pages and channels just sits still. I've tried posting a certain time of day, certain times a week, adding heaps of relevant hashtags, giveaways, made stickers, coloring in books, did challenges, made tutorials, you name it. But everything just stands still. I recently started advertising my online stores to see if people would be interested in merchandise, but that still went nowhere. I don't usually follow trends as I have little to no interest in them. I do lack in timing though. Most of the things I try, I try for say like less than a month, then change to something else or just not post at all, but or even post the illustration instantly as soon as I finish it, doesn't matter what time of day it is. I also have a fear of presenting myself to people like in person or even like online just in general people are scary <laughs> I guess it's the fear of being judged and or not being able to do what they ask so if they ask to do me to do something I can't do I feel guilty that I can't do that thing anyways and I've also made up business cards and they look really nice however I have no plan to give them out unless someone asks or I'm talking directly to someone about that thing as you can see here on the left that's the they're my current business cards which they're two-sided 
Anyways, I also barely talk to other artists. Instead of commenting or criticizing or critiquing their work, I just put the like button and keep going and sometimes save the image. I have no groups or chats of people like me. I have a couple of friends who are creators, but they live three hours away and barely get the time to talk, which is fair enough because life gets tough. But relating back to where I was saying that I've tried everything, it really... I really enjoyed this quote I found in a book called How to Have Great Ideas by Ingledu. I have not failed once. I have succeeded in proving that those 10,000 ways will not work. When I have eliminated the ways that will not work, I will find the way that will work. So I will. I will never give up. This is my dream. I'm going to do it. Anyway, so my process, the things I find challenging in that. My pre-production. I struggle with scheduling and planning especially working on my personal projects. On assessments or client work, I can generally keep up pretty quickly because I'm doing something for somebody else or to be marked by it. Whereas my own projects, I just, I flounder around and like it takes forever to do. Like I've got a story I've been working on since like 2000 and probably 12, 11 even. And I have got nowhere with it, but I'm still trying to work on it. Anyways. I also don't really research anything or reference things like pictures and stuff unless it's something I've never drawn. So if I haven't drawn a cow, I'll reference a cow. But because I've drawn, say, dragons, I won't ever look through and find more interesting dragon designs. I also don't record or journal any of my process unless it's for a specific video. So like if I'm doing a speed pain or if I'm telling people how I'm doing something, that's about it, which is really bad. Um, anyways, my post-production, I don't really reflect on my projects and I don't go back to fix projects. Once a project I deem done is done, I never go back, which is also really bad. Which, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, and a big, big thing is I never, like, while I'm working on things, I don't leave my room. I'm either doing the work or, say, reading or playing games and stuff. I don't go out and exercise and I don't eat well which which is not good at all especially for the creative mindset anyways and procrastination the big thing that little nasty demon that eats away at your conscious (laughs) I always in any project even not so much uni work but like any project I'll do a little bit but then I'll be like, well, I want to do that thing over there. So I'll go over there and say, read a book or draw something else or watch a movie and stuff. And then also whenever I am working on something like drawing or specifically drawing, I mean, written stuff, I can't watch stuff in the background. But whenever I'm drawing, I will always have something running in the background, whether it's a movie, a TV series, YouTube video, which is definitely not good as Dalen says in his book creative creativity unlimited where it has long been known that one of the main reasons why many people are not very good at painting and drawing is that they're too unconscious so I get distracted by watching the show and my work is not as good as it can be which I've really got to you know step in and fix that anyways once I and when I do get into the procrastination thing like if I don't do anything all day I'll go to bed going oh my god I didn't do anything I feel so crappy I hate myself you know that sort of which really sucks but yeah and when I do have plans I always just throw them out the window really which which is not good anyways my plan on how I can approach my future projects and my challenges With all of that said, there's always ways I can improve the way I go about doing things and how to approach those things that I find challenging. First one, marketing. A major thing I need to do in terms of my marketing is to set aside time to research all the current social media algorithms and learn how to use those statistics and charts to further my market and obviously write it down somewhere and research, like proper research into it. And I need to look into and follow current trends within reason. Like we don't want something that's completely out of my league. Like if it's not related to my practice, there's no point in doing it. And then match my work with the algorithms. So instead of posting as soon as I do something, schedule the posts for say five o'clock in the afternoon when people get home from work or something like that. Match what other people are doing. 
I also need to research how other artists go about marketing their work, whether it's stickers or flyers or brochures or, you know, all that sort of stuff. And talk to similar groups and artists and make groups for my creative work so that I'm not alone because you need groups to criticize your own work, their work and all that sort of stuff. But I'm also undertaking this master's degree, which will help with business because I'm doing a specialized business elective at some point during this course. How am I going to improve my process? My pre-production, when working on a personal project, I usually put no time into it, obviously. Well, I need to think about my research, schedule and plan everything and journal everything and actually stick to the plan. And instead of, you know, doing other things, seriously, stick to the plan. Have it written, even if it's in a giant piece of paper on my wall or something. And also refer to how Berkus goes about his process or the general process of creativity in his book, The Myths of Creativity. He states that you need preparation, incubation, insight, evaluation, and elaboration, which is very important, especially for that pre-production part. And when I go into post-production, once I complete a project, I do absolutely nothing. I just go, yep, that's done. Instead of doing that, I need to either make a journal, like a personal journal or even a public one, it doesn't really matter, and focus on what went wrong, what went right, and how I could further that piece or even do it again or for the next project as well as also setting a time side time aside to exercise so go for a walk go to the beach go for a swim eat better and definitely drink more often to feel better to be able to do these processes better i also found this app that's called habitica and it makes it more interesting to get tasks done so like you say draw this or draw a dragon and you click yes you've done that and you get experience points and like eggs and mounts and it's like a fantasy game like a role-playing game but for your personal tasks and even if I don't like certain things so like say I don't like drawing a person or an environment as Harford says in his video just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not helping every little thing that you do whether you like it or not will help towards something and I really need to get that into my head because I'm a A bit of a procrastination crazy. Anyways, continuing on, we also have all these great quotes I found in Indigo's book too. So they all refer to me in general, so I just had to put these in here. So on page 34, he says, Act like a kid and rediscover the highly creative process of playing make-believe in which any object can be repurposed. And a dress-up box full of old clothes has seen in seemingly infinite potential now this relates to me because i do role playing i do D, like i'm not that great at it but i do it so it's more outside of the box like they have the ideas to play with the stories anyways and then he also says get in the habit of curiosity and then you'll find ideas that will catch your eye always be on the lookout for interesting things so like when i go out and do stuff look out for different strange things and as he says in his next post take a camera Take a notebook, write down all of the ideas and things that I find, just for later even, just to put them away. He also says to spot and collect ideas, objects, stories, jokes, photos, everything. Just kind of have a compile, a pile of things, like a dragon horde really, of all the things that relate to you and re- like you're inspired by. Just so you have a pile of things that when you don't have ideas, well you have a library of ideas right there. In Ingladu is a genius, I tell you. Anyways, here's some other quotes I found that relate to my process. So Sean Tan says, With a blank piece of paper in front of me, my imagination is quite impotent. I could start drawing, but everything would end up the same. So I actively look to absorb foreign ideas and influences. So again, with the compiling information and everything you can refer back to if you have don't have an idea, like mix it all together. As Berkus also says, all ideas are secondhand, consciously and unconsciously drawn from million outside sources. So it's just this whole lot of your library of stuff and you're pulling things out for different projects and ideas. And also that even though it doesn't look good to start with, your stepping stones never reveal the final project, which Kenneth Stanley says in his Why Greatness Cannot Be Planned video. And as Harford says, try things you don't want to do, which is iterating that whole do things you don't want to do thing because, you know, it could be your best piece. Just like the piano guy, he didn't want to play the bad piano and he played the piano, but 
it was his best piece yet. I can't remember what piano it was, but still, it was the best piece. It was um, half a tease video, so yeah. Anyways, and then instead of rushing, 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 slow down and you learn more. Obviously, it's a little bit different with an assessment because you kind of have to do, do, do before the deadline. But, you know, when you have time to do your personal projects, just, you know, go about it. Anyways, to improve my procrastination, I need to keep it at the absolute minimum. I need to shut off everything except maybe a specific work playlist or radio, like, I don't know, night call radio. Something that I can't just, oh, stare at at and just not pay attention sort of thing. As Indiglu also says... Which activities, environments, and collaborations put you in the most conducive state of mind for having great ideas? Spot which routines, times a day, break times, and sleep times work best. So while shutting off everything, I need to find when my specific times are. Like I know for certain that early in the morning, so between say 7 and about 10 a.m. is my best work time. And then about 9 p.m. to about 11 p.m. is also very high. So that's when I should put my effort into doing my work. I also need to have everything out and accessible. Like I have my art books out on my desk, I just have to have everything I need just set up right there. Maybe bookmarks open already, that sort of thing. Have everything there and open so there's no excuse. That's, as Indiglu says, proximity to tools and materials coupled with the process of exploration and experiment can give you new ideas to develop ideas you already have. And also have your own Aladdin's cave, as Ingladu says. I really like this guy. He's he just he knows what he's talking about. Have your cave of wonders, things that you've done, things that you like that you've done, things that inspire you, and all that jazz. Which I have my my personal room, as you can see, full of books and toys and inspiration and my drawings on the cupboard. I should have more drawings out, but it's not my house, so I can't like glue tack and put things on the wall. Sadly enough. But that's what my Facebook page is for. I can go through and see all that. How my chosen approach will enhance the value of my outcomes. Each of the things I need to change will enhance my creative practice in many, many ways. Enhancing my process. If I change the way I go about my process in the ways I discussed, I will be able to reflect on what went wrong and right, be able to enhance that project get it better than what the other one was like you know upgrade every time have access to more materials to refer my work to and enhance the quality so more reference i can enhance that creature even more so like having a goat or several goats can enhance the dragon horns and stuff like that feel better and more motivated motivated to do more work and have a more prepared schedule and be a be able to achieve more goals rather than feeling guilty enhancing my marketing If I change the way I go about my marketing in the ways I discussed, I will have the information to be able to reach more people on social media, be able to pull new people in using things they like, be able to work with other people within my field, have creative people to discuss projects and ideas with, and yeah. Anyways, and enhancing my procrastination, the big one. If I change the way I go about my procrastination in the ways I discussed, I will be able to work at my best without distractions, be able to work at 100%, not just watching a show in the background sort of thing. Use positive procrastination to find new trends and information or get chores done. So do things, if I'm procrastinating from a from a drawing or something, do stuff that'll go back to that drawing, like look at artists and stuff. And these are all my citations. But thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this little video about my process and how I can improve it. And have a good day.